Hello, everybody, and welcome to this very interesting session of uh, webinar, Digitalization Driving the Industry Ahead. Uh, before we move on to this session, I would like to give a small introduction about uh, 12th Asian Metallurgy. To, uh, I think most of you know it, but uh, still for those who have not joined or who are not tuned with us earlier, uh, Asian Metallurgy is a, uh, basically a ground show which was started in 1997. And uh, it used to be done at Nehru Center or le and later on on Bombay Exhibition Center, Goregao. Uh, since COVID, we have transformed this show into digital show. And uh, 20, 2021 December, we did this show for the first time on digital platform. And encouraged by the results and the uh, support from the uh, industry, we did it in 2022, still better result. And this time also, we are doing it with the support of the industry and the uh, all the associations uh, related to metallurgical industry. Uh, uh, the first year, 2021, we reached to around 5.5 uh, uh, lakh uh, visitors and uh, not visitor, viewers, I would say. Uh, in 2022, we reached to around 7.5 viewers and this show is expected to reach to around 1 million viewers all around, all, all around the globe. So this is the power of digitalization. So this is the subject of today's uh, webinar, which is digitalization. So now coming to this subject of digitalization, what we, uh, of course, COVID was a very uh, bad and very dark uh, experience in everybody's life, but there is something good about COVID and that, uh, that good is, it has taught us how to use digitalization for our life how to use digitalization to our in our industries so i think that is one uh, one uh, i think learning which we have taken from covid i think industry has also taken and uh, to discuss digitalization we have been talking about digitalization so i have many questions you know i have questions like is it more talk than practiced it is a, is it a hype does digitalization really help us so these are some of the questions which I have and for that to answer these questions and tell us more about digitalization in detail, what is digitalization, how it can be implemented, why it has to be implemented, what results we can expect from digitalization and who can do it, how they can do it. All these questions we have and for to answer these questions, I have few experts uh, here and uh, I would like to introduce them. First, uh, I would like to introduce Mr. Mike Hederman. Hello, Mr. Mike. Mr. Hello. Mike is uh, Area Sales Manager of EMG Automation. GMBH is a metal industry professional having experience of more than 40 years in the sales and service of variety of applications in flat steel gauging. He has worked extensively in various global markets, including China and India. Those are the biggest markets. He is based in Gloucester, UK, supporting our gauging facility in Germany. So welcome, Mr. Mike, and uh, uh, thanks for sparing your time uh, for this interesting webinar. No problem at all. We have, uh, Mr. Abhimanyu Raja. Mr. Mr. Raja started the career as project engineer from Textool and Voltas Limited, handled few World Bank aided projects, as commissioning engineer, co-promoted Genu Technologies with the primary objective of providing portable robotic and remotely operated solutions and services which shall improve safety and productivity in non-conducive work environments and hazardous applications. Welcome, Mr. Raja, and thanks for sparing your time here on this webinar. And we have Mr. Nara Rajesh. Dr. Nara Rajesh has been working in steel industry for many, many years. Uh, he, I think he has done his doctorate in digitalization and metallurgical industries only. He was in Bilai Steel Plant for some time, worked in some foundries. And now he has, along with his professional associates, has started a startup, rather, uh, Ultimate Technologies. And he is director technical in that. So they are also implementing uh, this uh, digitalization solutions to the steel and metal industry. Uh, uh, 
thank you mr uh, dr rajesh for sparing your time and welcome to this uh, webinar and uh, yeah so first uh, i would like to you know get a small uh, feel of what these gentlemen are doing so what they are doing professionally about their products let us understand first what what are they doing i would like to start with uh, mr raja raja can you show us some some present small presentation about your product solutions to the metallurgical industry yeah one minute i can share Must yeah share you can share screen. you can share yeah share the screen the screen is uh, visible sir yes it is But let it be very short, huh? because yeah, we have yeah. I, I take a very minute. minimum time only. Yeah, yeah. We uh, have yes, time for the discussion. Yes, yes, yes. See, we are we are from IIT Bombay. We had uh, started our uh, uh, journey from National Center of Excellence, IIT Bombay. Our main motto is that uh, risk mitigation through robotics, human risk mitigation, particularly in high temperature application areas, hazardous application areas, and wherever there are fumes and other things, right? So this is how uh, this is our uh, eminent uh, board, and uh, we are talking about robot as a tool for improving safety. See, digitalization includes robotics and the data acquisition, right? IIoT along with the robotic things, we call it uh, digitalization. If you see uh, leading companies like uh, PwC and all, now the digital division is suggesting so many changes in the operation procedures plus the communication of the data from the machinery onto the decision makers and the parameters onto the uh, systems. So we are talking about improving the safety through our robotic systems. These are all robotic, not the standard robots which is available in the market. We exclusively design and manufacture robots for a given industry vertical, right? See, we are talking about three objectives. One is the safety and sustainability. Another, uh, another is the uh, capacity utilization and the consistency for the buyer. The third one is that uh, judicial intervention, right? Many areas now, the high temperature areas are the sludge areas, underwater tanks, and the judicial intervention is there that we should not send human beings. So these are all three areas where we are working in, and uh, most of our products are giving solutions to multi-units. Uh, I'll just run through, these are all the bath feeders. Now conventionally it is being done by human being where he opens the doors and a lot of gases come out and the high temperature <clears throat> and, uh, temperature comes out and these people are manually feeding it, right? I mean, new units are having auto feeders, but uh, manually these, these people are able to feed it. And now we are giving a remotely operated vehicle for feeding it. So this is one area, a smelter area. The other area is that uh, the anodes are getting cleaned manually using a crowbar like steel bars and they are cleaning the surface of the anodes when the machine is in operation. So there we are giving a remotely operated vehicle which can um, actually save the human, uh, for, we can operate it from a distance of 20 to 30 meters. And there will be cameras, everything available. Online data is also available to the management people elsewhere, sitting elsewhere. And many other parameters can be loaded onto that and we can transfer that. This vehicle is capable of traveling uh, in uh, 300 gas, 200 to 300 gas magnetic field which is very difficult and uh, I mean, uh, technically a challenging job to get the insulation for that kind of uh, magnetic flux and also the temperature and the resistance of all these things. Okay, uh, another thing is the doses in the uh, high temperature part areas where uh, we have the insulation material for the entire robots, robots which can be operated from outside. This is one uh, tricky application. So these are all the areas that we are giving for uh, aluminum industry. We see some of the electrodes maintenance happens in the, uh, I mean, in a four meter level or a five meter level where the operator uh, is at a risk. Now we are given one uh, ROV, remotely operated vehicle, where uh, it is also again exclusively designed for uh, this application. So we, another solution what we are giving is the cast off solutions where uh, the uh, slack removal is being done manually today under high risk conditions. So we are giving some robotic applications there where the slack can be removed. We can program the speed in uh, accordance with the speed of the uh, uh, process. So this is one area. Uh, you can see the schematic representation of this. This is already all these, whatever I'm talking are already in the field. 
it is not in the theoretical stage we are already deployed so that way what happens uh, we save the humans from directly getting exposed is one another thing is that we save a lot of energy by that way uh, we when the carbon electrodes are getting cleaned up uh, frequently then uh, we consume lesser power so though the data this is just new machine so when the data is compiled we are sure that in the long run we will contribute a lot in uh, energy saving and carbon emissions Okay. These are the lounder applications where the molten metal is being pushed presently by a manual uh, operation. Right. The flow of the uh, aluminium, molten aluminium is being uh, I mean, ensured by the uh, physical uh, physical pushing. Uh, now we are given one uh, robot remotely operated system for that. So this is a lounder. This thing. We are actually exporting to some uh, European country also this one. So in the same way, we talk about the uh, uh, steel industry. If you see the furnaces like Corex furnace and all, uh, when they, after 1500 degrees of operation, this is uh, brought down to a normalcy of around 200 to 300 degrees, where the human being goes in and uh, he's cleaning the bristle holes in a given uh, uh, silo or a vessel, reactor vessel. So it is directly he's uh, poking, uh, using a poker and uh, removing the uh, bristles. I mean, the chokes there in the bristle hole. So what happens, uh, The directly the flame or the ash, which is at 200, 300 degree, comes onto the human being directly. So now that is a risky operation being done. Even today, it is being done like, like that only. So we are uh, we have given a design for this. It is under manufacture. So wherein there will be a telescopic arm which will uh, go through the bristles. We can operate it from outside the furnace. So these are all some of the areas when we talk about digitalization, we talk about... Uh, uh, one is an industry 4.0, another, as I told, uh, it is a ESG compliance also, because we have to save the humans from the gases and reduce the gas emissions. So these are all certain areas. And uh, since uh, time is short, and uh, another thing uh, what we have done is that this uh, uh, in a global patent, already we have got through the, uh, got through the Indian patent. It's a hydraulic uh, vessel. This is a hydraulic uh, crawler, totally operating hydraulically for some sensitive chemical zones and uh, petrochemical zones. So we can send this vehicle underwater and it uh, removes the total sludge in the bottom of any uh, process tank or the effluent tank and it sucks it out in uh, in situ conditions. Though, so there is no need to vacate the water and no need to send a human being because some of the uh, metal, I mean, uh, the processed uh, liquid after finishing the metals are uh, very, very uh, dangerous in nature or hazardous in nature. So sludge settled in the bottom of the tank is being uh, uh, now uh, cleaned manually after draining out the uh, total water, which is uh, normally takes a long time and there is a plant shutdown also. So we are saving the plant shutdown. Also, we are saving the humans from entering into that. So these are all the part of our digital initiative, what we feel, right? The same way the pipeline cleaning, if you see the chokes in the bottom pipe, if you see that, the chokes are like this. Many of the pipes, industrial pipes, will be like this. Though externally we don't see that, but internally, if you see some of the acid pipes and other things, they don't have even effective forty percent area for the liquid to flow through. So in these areas, we give uh, some uh, crawlers like what you see that which which will uh, literally burrow through that, and uh, we are able to uh, clean the pipelines from a remote operations. So these are all certain digital initiatives, initiatives we have taken. So this is just up to us. I mean, uh, this is about us. Now uh, I'm open for the questions or uh, we can go yeah. with the other panelists, then we can come thank back. You. Thank you. Thank you, thank Mr. Sir. Raja. Thank you, sir. Uh, now thank we you. move on to Mr. Mike. Mr. Mike, you want to show uh, show us some slides? Yes, please. Just a be couple really of minutes. A... Be very yes, short. Well, and... Be very, very short. Okay, so. Precise. Okay. Hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, not now. You share the screen. Oh, great. Share the screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, so very briefly, um, we uh, I work for EMG uh, Automation, uh, okay. working for the gauging part, uh, working for non-contact thickness measurement equipment, mm -hmm. uh, which we produce in Dresden, in Germany. We've mm -hmm. been making it for over 60 years, um, and we, serve, we cover all aspects of the rolling process. Um, so from hot rolling, um, we provide uh, we can provide triple point measurement or single point measurement for the hot mills, um, and with extra equipment we can provide width measurement, uh, length and speed, and temperature 
um, which is fed back. We provide the thickness measurement back to the mill control system so that the thickness and um, thickness of the material can be controlled directly. Um, we also provide systems for cold rolling, um, cold rolling lines, but both single stand and multi stand line, lines, um, and also for finishing lines, cutting, slitting, and um, processing lines like coating lines and this kind of thing. We can provide single channel or triple channel systems, and we use X ray, isotope, and laser technologies. We have been uh, as mentioned, we've been doing this for um, over 60 years. Um, previously, um, everything was very analog based. Um, in recent years, a lot of things have been switched um, to digital platforms. Um, we, um, within our measurement, we provide, we measure, when we are measuring the material, our detectors digitize our signals before, before they are passed back for processing. Uh, and this means that uh, by using a digital signal, we're not influenced by electrical in, electrical interference from mill motors and and other interference. And this that, this is one way that uh, digitalization has really helped us um, with our with our systems. So as mentioned, we provide for all aspects of the rolling industries um, for uh, steel, for aluminium, and also for non-ferrous uh, for copper and brass applications. We um, can do some non-metals, but it, we're more focused on the metals and for flat flat sheet rolling applications. So as mentioned, hot rolling, cold rolling, foil mill applications, aluminium foil, and uh, finishing and coating lines. So we measure from uh, very thick material, maybe up to about 80, 80 millimeters of steel down to double five or double four microns of aluminium. So we do a very wide range um, using X-ray, isotope and laser. Um, I won't go into um, any more detail about the systems as such at the moment, but uh, if anyone has any questions about them, I'm very happy to answer. Okay, so, uh, okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. And we move on to Dr. Rajesh. Uh, Dr. Rajesh, you want to show something or talk? No, sir. I don't have any presentation to show. We'll uh, discuss on that digitalization aspect in the Indian steel industry and Indian metals industry. Yeah. Overall, overall the evolution of the is what it is going through. So, uh, as we move on. So, as far as the metals industry is concerned, metals. We moved from mm. SAP, SAP implementation of SAP systems like ERP systems in, inside the plant to the correct digitalization drive. That is like uh, connecting all the all the systems, all the furnaces, all the equipment, and we made into a comprehensive system called IMAP, what we have prepared in the initial phase. This is this was in the year 2017. Mm -hmm. So, if you see the developmental aspect, what what we had taken, we 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 started transforming from a small digital, the physical system to digitalization, this to online systems to digitalization completely in the net. So, the initial phase, what we had chosen, like uh, in the, uh, like we we evolved over a period of time. Like in 2000 to 2010, the first 10 years it goes by with the learning, the prediction and optimization algorithm. Yeah. And from 2010 to 2020, if you talk about is like a deep learning, the vision based systems came into the picture. 2020 and later on, we are moving towards the generative artificial intelligence, generative artificial Gen AI, which is like a commonly known as like a what we are seeing is chat GPT, BARD, and the Gemini. All these are like these are the evolutionary phases which is happening. So to implement these systems into the industry, what ultimate is wants to do? We are said we are integrating data driven digitalization trials. We are we are taking care about industrial internet of things. We are taking care about. AR, VR systems, 
like augmented reality or virtual reality so our our company ultimate in, ultimate technology is a technology integrator basically and we have devised one product called ultimate eye map which is going to take care about the innovation maintenance administration and production aspects of the steel plant or for that matter for metal entire metal industry this is in a nutshell about all the product about okay yeah so uh, so now that uh, mr raja are you there i don't yeah know. yes sir i am available i mean yeah yeah please uh, yeah yeah put on your uh, this thing uh you yeah. video okay so yeah. now that we know uh, something about all these uh, gentlemen uh, mr maik mr raja and dr rajesh what they are doing how they are contributing to the process of digitalization in the uh, steel and metals industry uh, 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 this is my general observation that lot of people talk about digitalization but still industry is not uh, fully convinced i would like to have your perspective your experiences on this we'll have two three points you know one after another so on this point uh, i would like to have your opinion and your experiences and maybe mr mike can share his experience in european countries as well so that we know where we stand vis a vis uh, the other countries uh, that uh, people talk about digitalization but when it actually comes to the implementation not many people come forward and they uh, that means they still have lot of questions lot of confusion a lot of uh, apprehension towards uh, the process of digitalization and uh, uh, what has been your experience i'm i'm uh, i want to ask you this mr starting with mr raja yeah uh, i share some my experience sir uh, the basic thing is this uh, adoption of automation right <laughs> adoption of digitalization needs a lot of counseling and the understanding from the middle management yeah. right sometimes it is depending on the companies no sometimes the uh, budgetary allocations are based on the return of investments okay yeah. most it is a conventional practice yeah. so uh, when we are talking about the allocation based on the return on investments we cannot expect our establish a return on investment for safety aspect right at the same time uh, we have to convince the top management for allocation of the money right so we see that there is a tendency to compare this with the routine commercial automation so digitalization in uh, safety areas particularly we are talking about hot metal handling if you see most of the plants are at least 30 40 years old and their material handling equipments were designed uh, i mean 3 uh, 4 decades back Mm. now rovs are there now so many equipments are there just mm. in not just out we can manage things from one department to another mm. so a lot of things are uh, to be uh, done and uh, happy to note that some of the leading companies like indalco they are taking a lot of initiative in fact uh, we are supported by many such uh, initiatives and we jointly develop products because uh, joint development of products sometimes we miss the uh, assessment of the cost they yeah. support us yeah. because the iteration cost is involved we we may may not be able to factor in that so a lot of things are there that is one another is the implementation part one is the adoption i was uh, talking about three points point number one is the attitude of adoption two is the uh, funding right the finances towards that i mean is trying to establish return on investment on safety perspective also the third is the implementation schedules Mm -hmm. the implementation schedule is again uh, i mean bogged up with the uh, existing production activities without stopping without holding they want to implement new things it's like uh, uh, doing a surgery on a running man right no. you can't do a change uh, and uh, i mean you can't do heart surgery on a person who is already running in the ground I right know. so that is one area where uh, i think the uh, management has to decide so these are all three areas macro level i can uh, factor in Uh, the rest we'll uh, discuss with the panelists uh, then we can come to some other points thank you thank you thanks uh, what is your experience dr rajesh yes sir initial phases as like as that as rajesh said that resistance is there but to my to me rather than the middle management it is a top management it is to be top driven approach 
the digitalization drive should be driven from the top. So if the top management feels that, yes, it is to be implemented, it's always with there. Yeah. As far as ROI is concerned, yes, definitely. Uh, we are still having that mindset, what is ROI coming out of that? But as uh, as as we are making ourselves as a developed nation and the cost of manpower is also increasing day by day. So at one point of time, and at least with this evolutionary phases in the last two to three decades, we have seen that the benefit, the, the cost of like, a, 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 maybe in 2000, if we say, take the same proposal and ask that to do the digitalization drive across the industry, that may be that inheritance are there, that, uh, that mentality is there at the top, top itself and at the at all levels of the industry. People feel that their jobs will go away with this. Now, with the present generation, Gen, gen Z generation, and uh, so without computer, you cannot bring them into the industry at all. So obviously, the digitalization is going to uh, take leaps and bounds from here onward, especially with the new techno techniques that, that are available. So one one should take all these things and go hand in hand along with the conventional methodology. Yeah, right. But uh, tell me, Rajesh, if somebody is asking, if I am a customer and if I ask you, uh, what is my ROI, am I not justified? I want to know, no? Without that, how can yeah, I, that, why should I go ahead? Are you, are you guys that, able to give any commitment on ROI? If not, then no. uh, sorry. Please, sir, in, in that, I am, going, I am taking the shield of Raja, what he has told, like a safety, you cannot you cannot put up all yeah, even, even safety. I wanted to tell Mr. Raja, even safety, you can count number of accidents. No, there is some tangibility. You know, one thing, sir. There has to be some tangibility to the whole thing. Otherwise, how can I get funding from the banks also? If there is no can I interfere, sir? Can I interfere? Yeah. Sir, two things in this. One is uh, just a minute, uh, Mr. Raja, just a minute. Let us have view from Mr. Okay. Mike and then we all will discuss. Mr. Mike, fine, please fine. Come in. And share your experience in the uh, European continent. Yes, I think um, we've touched on, we've uh, already stated that um, upper management have to be convinced of the advantage of the digitalization. Um, yeah. Often this has to be the return on investment. We have to show how they can make more money, how they can save money and improve their profits. Um, other advantages as well can be uh, stated, but it, often it will come down to the bottom line. In, in our industry, what I think uh, we've seen is that with digitalization, communications have improved so much in recent in recent years. Mm -hmm. um, we are now able to access our systems in India or in other parts of the world directly from our factory in Dresden. Um, and during the pandemic, we actually commissioned systems without sending engineers to site. So we've been able to remotely access equipment and remote and the, give our customers much better service by directly interfacing with the systems. And this is the sort of thing that uh, upper management of companies will be looking for. They want to see the advantages of digitalization and they need some convincing about this in all aspects, not just the return on investment, but things like safety, things like efficiency, things like uh, less downtime, this kind of thing. This is what will help to, um, it, to encourage more digitalization in industry. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, but uh, even even if you talk about efficiency, it can be measured in terms of some at some point, no, some some uh, increase in profits or some decrease in the costing or cost or something. So increase in efficiency also can be made tangible, no, Doctor Rajesh. What do you yeah, mean by efficiency? It cannot be just hawa hawa yeah. Come on. No, 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 no. The thing is, everything is, see, once you are able to measure accurately, yeah, yeah. And once you are able to measure accurately, once it is visualized in front of your eyes, you can control effectively. Once you have done that control effectively, your efficiency automatically improves. Yeah, that's what, but you have to measure somewhere. That increase in the efficiency, you have to, you have to be able to measure somewhere at yeah, some uh, perimeter. Dr. Mr. Yeah. Raja. Yeah, see, what I meant by ROI is that generally if it is a commercial automation or something like that, if the ROI is between 24 to 36 months, for a digital process, they can shift it to 48 to 60 months or so. 
because two three things sir one is uh, the digitalization is making you future ready you will not become obsolete right that is one point it is uh, we have to consider second thing is that uh, sometimes the customer is going to insist on that it is not our choice the customer wants a, a insistence right so whether you are interested or not to be in the industry or to get the lcs through i have to uh, i mean uh, oblige with some conditions mera marji nahi hai usme this is the second point third point is the not all benefits are tangible right and in one of my interactions uh, in a group meeting some uh, a manager from the plant manager was telling me आगे आदमी नहीं मिलेगा सब मिलने से आपको आर वो सी वेन ह्यूमन बींग्स आर अवेलेबल टू वर्क इन अल्टर प्लान देन आई कैन टॉक अबाउट रिटर्न ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट कंपेयर विद ह्यूमन बींग्स अभी आगे पांच साल में आफ्टर दिस सेट ऑफ पीपल रिटर्न नो सेकेंड जनरेशन पीपल आर गोइंग टू कम इन टू अल्टर इंडस्ट्री तब क्या करने वाले हैं सो वी आर वी आर हैविंग मल्टीपल फैक्टर्स इंफ्लुएंस इन द डिसीजन बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली the uh, decision making particularly in the top level as uh, dr rajesh was telling the top level people uh, some of them are still having the conventional thought process theek hai sabko ek hi scale mein measure karna for everything and anything we talk about as a policy roi 36 month ka andar aana by the time we implement and all the people learn it it will take one year oh. right by uh, by the time uh, i think rajesh ji will uh, i mean uh, accept this factor we educate them and literate uh, and to make them literate on the uh, digital areas and train them itself we take one year abhi do saal ka andar andar kali teen saal mein unka as a policy they want to have a return on investment within 36 months so do saal baki hai do saal ka andar andar kaise hota hai so certain flexibilities they have to take i think lot of uh, development is happening but still i think uh, it has to be further moved right this is what is my opinion. Sir, you are you are on mute. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Rajesh, you have to tell. You have to say something. Yes, sir. Uh, see, the mindset has been changed over the period of time. This this is what we are observing from the people. Like, uh, uh, I'm participating in Steel Metal Expo from 2017 onwards. At least, it's not wrong. In the six years down the line, there is lot of lot many changes happened. across the world we had seen this uh, the, we started the digitalization but that is a, it, it's a fancy item at that point of time in 2017 and during the covid era it is the absolute necessity and now in 2023 with this introduction of gen ai into the picture there mm-hmm. there are a lot of things going to happen in that particular domain and parallelly there are the, the development phase what we are seeing that like uh, Simple example like India took 60, 65 years to reach to the two trillion economy, and only 10 years for the next two trillion dollars to be added to the economy. So that with that pace, if you want to move, if economy is moving, me you also need to move in that pace. So automatically, you need to imbibe all the technologies available, take it, own it, and then implement it at your place so that you can take the fast forward advantage in the run. And if this this change we are seeing in the industry so we are getting calls from the industry to implement the system by their own mm-hmm. there is no hard selling is not required at this point of time at least yeah this is my observation you are yeah. agreeing yeah mr mike ah uh, yes um i think uh, there is uh, we have also one thing we have to consider is the customers the the, the customers are asking for more and more information about what they are buying uh, and more specific information and and the only way to really provide this uh, particularly for things like the automobile industry is uh, to have digital storage of, of everything that is being produced um and to make this available to the customers because if you don't somebody else will yeah yeah okay See, one of the uh, you know thoughts which comes to my mind in a uh, we are in a country like India where we have lot of population you know we, uh, so is it that some people argue that uh, over digitalization or too much of digitalization will create unemployment will increase unemployment so how do we respond as uh, digitalization professionals 
how do you respond to this uh, argument in europe maybe that is not a problem europe so population is decreasing and uh, maybe digitalization is a way forward natural way forward for europe but uh, there is still there is still great reluctance and there's still very nervous still very people reluctant. are very nervous about this so because, how do you, you respond to this uh, argument uh, uh, raja how do you respond can I, can I respond to that sir absolutely yeah you, See, are, I remember, you have to respond yeah, yeah. <laughs> i remember uh, during our younger days we used to i mean uh, receive the resistance from the trade unions for computerization in banks mm. right the main three point they used to put is that it will uh, snatch away the employment second thing is that uh, computerization is a way of uh, taking information like that they had some three points all three points are proven wrong because at that time state bank of india was having 6000 branches probably now it is 30000 branches right so at that time entire bankers employment may be 1 lakh people today maybe 1 million people all are computer savvy right and if you remove computer or drop down computer for one hour entire system stops <laughs> nobody now asks for manual things those, so those any different. technology <laughs> Yeah, no, any technology actually is resisted. That's a natural phenomenon. But here, what I feel is, you are going to be future ready. It is not that uh, you are actually taking a master lead and you are a ustad. I said, kuch nahi hai. Otherwise, you will become obsolete. You yeah. will be thrown out one day if you are not going to be digitalized. Probably some companies are one step ahead or two step ahead. But it becomes a compulsion. Without a cell phone, how do you live now? It is like that. I feel that way, sir. Yeah. Dr. Rajesh? Yeah, I'll add, yeah, I'll add to Rajesh's point on this. Definitely it is. Like, uh, you need to think from the global perspective. Now, from the global perspective is beyond air. That is, see, we are already reaching to the mass. So, there is there is no depth of market for anyone. Or no depth of, suppose if 100 crore, India when got independence has, is having around 30 crore population. And today, Say after this many number of years, we are at 140 crores. And we are able to feed, we are able to cater to all the requirements and things go beyond this level to the next, say, global scale level. Maybe the, the entire world population also I might have grown like this. Mm -hmm. So, we are, in, in this evolutionary phases, these, these, all these new technologies, if people are not adopting, so we people, we cannot run with, uh, say, uh, the wars cannot be fight with that. Uh, with, the, with the present day warfare, warfare is all about drones and other things. Sitting over here, destroying the thing, not having a big battle tank. Mm -hmm. right. the, the recent war, what we are seeing in Ukraine, uh, Ukraine versus Russia, or even this Hamas, Israel war, what we are seeing over there. We are looking more and more. They are fighting on the technology rather than any other front, than the physical front. I understand. I understand. So, yeah. so, the, so the, the similar aspect, that one is what? The one is the other one is for the development aspect. The development also should go in that way only. If you if you resist me, you are going to go the, the next coming years. You cannot survive in the market. So that... Hey, Mike, what is your reaction? You say the European companies are still reluctant? Why? They, not so much the companies, but uh, often the workforce is reluctant um, and uh, there will be some resistance from unions and this kind of thing, not oh. just in the steel industry, but uh, other industry. You're seeing it a lot on, for example, the rail industry at the moment, uh, where they are introducing um, uh, automatic ticketing and this kind of thing. And the unions are resisting this as uh, because they are seeing their, their their members will be losing jobs um but to be honest in, as uh, we were talking about future proofing uh, mr raja was talking about future proofing systems it's not really a choice um you have to adapt to the new technology because it's not going away and it is a case of how you deal with it not whether you deal with it or not you have to find a way to deal with it Mm. We have to find a way to deal with it. Do you see any change in the response from the companies in Europe in the last few years? Is it increasing? The response is encouraging, increasing, or it is stagnant, stable? No, it's, I'd say it's increasing. 
it's increasing more and more uh, companies are implementing things like big data mm. um, and um, they are um, using digitalization more in their communications around the factories, uh, more robotics and um, other things to improve the efficiency, also improve the safety. Many of the dangerous jobs are disappearing, if you like. They need less people to do it. They are getting robots to do it. So it's being um, it's being um, accepted um, in some cases quite reluctantly. And in some cases, it's quite a battle um, with the workforce and with society in general but it is happening it is definitely happening and you can see it happening more and more in everyday items as well as industry okay. who has been our experience in india dr rajesh and uh, mr raja uh, rajesh what what do you think yeah yeah we are seeing that that's what i'm saying sir the industries the top management they that here also the I'm not seeing any resistance towards the digitalization as many of the industries in India is concerned. In fact, the adoption, technology adoption is quicker, faster in India compared to any the Western world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like the UPI system, what we are, UPI is the, the most successful thing or the, the change in yeah, dramatically. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, because it is totally easy to operate. operate. See, one of the reasons is it is easy to operate. Digitalize yeah, exactly. it is not that easy. One has to learn, no? One has to learn yeah, new yeah. skill set. So I, I'll add a part. Everybody has to learn new skill sets. Right? Imagine, imagine, a a point like this. See, uh, imagine like a system like this. When say UPI is connected and a service or or, or a, a product has been purchased from a from a vendor, all got dislized. So entire consumption pattern got dislized. Now which is to be produced, what is to be produced, the data analytics part comes into picture and that that data if you are able to capture and throw that one. So there is no scarcity or there is no, you can control the inflationary trends also if you put it in that way. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yes. Raja, what? what, what? Yeah, uh, see my experience is that we are having uh, one uh, sludge cleaning robot where we deploy the robot underwater and uh, it moves around, we operate it with the joystick from outside, it pumps out the sludge. The, our experience is so good uh, that even the industries have started enjoying it so much because without taping, uh, taking a plant shutdown, right, and without taking uh, the water pumping out, because huge quantities of water, 5 lakh cubic meter, this, that and all, some of the talabs are 100 meter by 40 meter by 6 meters. So uh, such big things when it is happening, uh, they started by telling that human beings, uh, it will happen with this money, why you are expensive, this, that, and all. Now that question does not come at all. The resistance has literally vanished because of two things, sir. One is the comfort level. Another mm -hmm. is the uh, judicial intervention and all. See, one or two accidents, right, in such massive factories uh, really, I mean, puts everyone back. And uh, there are a lot of judicial things and these people have to undergo a lot of uh, procedural things after the accident. So uh, it is being strictly enforced uh, article that is one uh, major uh, actually uh, deterrent for these people uh, to not to go with the conventional methods. So yeah. they are almost uh, in a way, in a way, almost pushed towards the uh, digitalization of modern machines or automation side. Yes, this is I what I feel. That there so, are distinct uh, yeah. advantages. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, you have underwater uh, services and all. There are drones which are available now for uh, inspection yeah. of uh, very. Vertical high towers, yeah. Uh, towers, yeah. Tall uh, buildings, tall buildings, uh, vertical tower inspections. Even, even yeah. in a hazardous uh, environment, that drone can inspect. So, all these things are there. I do agree that there are distinct advantages for digitalization. And uh, see, conventionally, we had, uh, you know, the definition of digitalization, if one asked me, I would say a uh, few years back that connecting the machines, making machines talking to each other and making the whole supply, whole process chain in, uh, integrated. Like at one end, it talks to the supplier and at other end, it talk, also talks to the customers. So that yes. integrated supply chain and intermediate machines talking to each other would make digitalization. That was the conventional definition of digitalization. Now from here, where do we go? 
what is now i hear a lot of thing ai vi that uh, augmented reality and what not so what what else is happening in the umbrella of digitalization can can uh, you people throw some light and where do we go from here starting with raja but i would like to have really good uh, uh, detailed uh, you know uh, uh, your take on this this is the most yeah, interesting see, question let, let me put it uh, this way sir right. actually yeah uh, see we are talking about uh, say vision system or artificial intelligence something like that see there is an object earlier uh, i mean five years back automation means you just pick up the object right now what happens if the object is slightly this way or that way there will be a flashing camera just because uh, before it picks up and it identifies right if it, it moves accordingly so the last moment change intelligence we are adding to the machine earlier now i am from uh, uh, actually my earlier company is from telematics i i i have a telematics company big company and i was working on garmenting system so mm. i was making 5000 t-shirts per day right so i know what is the change today and what was that earlier as an a serial entrepreneur i have been into entrepreneurship so what happens when you are uh, going with the futuristic things uh, we have to be predictive suppose there were accidents happening or uh, product failures if the thickness of the sheet particularly if you are making a sheet if the thickness has been varying earlier it was varying we were controlling now we will plot the pattern of variation and we will try to predict it what is going to happen down the line how to prevent it so we are talking about predict prediction through the analytics and preventing steps earlier yeah. it is only informing the management i saw or right if the thickness of one mm plate is becoming 1.2 there will be alarm and the machine will be stopped that's all so now current stage mein that automation sir ek step aage badh rahe hum log so what to how to prevent it and what were the possibilities earlier what were the 10 years or 5 years uh, track uh, i mean uh, history But of this this is level 3 automation no what you are talking is level 3 automation no we are talking we about the prediction we are going back to the machine and changing the uh, speed or something like that that is level 3 that is a level 3 one what i am telling is predictive in nature suppose yes. you are uh, you are data canal analyzing the data collecting all the data and i am able to predict what is going to happen okay so that will be the that will be the uh, ai whatever we are talking about the intelligence will be used towards that what is going to happen in future so that will be one uh, important aspect so this is what i feel that and uh, the virtual reality is another thing people are talking it's more of a, a demonstrable thing right before making a prototype we can have a virtual uh, prototype because what is happening today is that to see a machine working we have to invest some uh, really physically we have to make a machine that was the earlier era simulation i now we can see virtually and we can uh, give to the team decision making team they can correct it also a waisa nahi hai waisa karna something yes. like that so the iteration process is reduced yes so yes. that way we can do the right thing in the first go hmm, hmm. that is that is what i think uh, the current digitalization is happening i mean uh, ai may that is what is happening in ai thank you thank you dr rajesh what is your take yes, on in fact we reach it to the third generation of ai itself as i am telling you clearly this uh, machine learning prediction and optimization is in the 2000 2010 2010 to 2020 is the second deep learning vision and speech analytics third is now 2020 or what introduction of you might have seen the chat gpi chat gpi is one of the form of this generative ai so mission in, in chat gpi or uh, in generative ai what it is happening mission already understood what is to be done so it is already giving you see if you, if you write that uh, i uh, uh, submit my cv in this fashion giving only basic data in in a fraction of seconds chat gpi will give you the complete statistics now if ex- extrapolate that one to your your equipment earlier say suppose the madgan madgan for a blast furnace i am t- taking a simple reference people used to manually load the machine till now it is happening it is not 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 in the not in the thing manually it is getting loaded so now with the introduction how the industry is going to change with the implementation of digitalization with respect to the tap hole mudgun case i am referring to the mudgun is getting connected to the computer computers inside so 
the, the what is the charge going inside the blast furnace what is the reactions inside going the blast furnace what is the hot level that is there inside the blast furnace everything is getting fed so the information is fed to the machine now so machine knows that in the next 30 minutes time the hot is going to be emptied and uh, blowing out is going to be started so i i should be ready to close the tap hole so okay. Once the closing the tap hole, the 20 minute duration, we will take out the tap, the mudgun out, so that the setting time is over, and then refilling activity is to be done. Now we make make that particular machine more intelligent using this generative AI technique. Mm -hmm. So so th this is the evolutionary pattern, the manual loading. So they say, okay, computer has we already done that one machine prediction something is done in that space. Now it is re reached to this level. It has seen that tap hole condition. It has seen that one accordingly. It adjusts its front face nose and then closes the tap hole. Mm. Okay. So in the, in the next ten years down the line, it may suggest us no. The, whatever the design, what you had given me is having this much diameter and this much hollowness is there, which is insufficient to me to control this. Give me parameters like this. If machine tells you to do the design accordingly. Mm. Think about that. This is the future. Okay, okay, okay. So, humans are getting extra support for the actual things to be done using the generative AI technique. Yes, yes. So, that generative AI is going to be embedded everywhere. Right, right. You are right, Rajesh. I see uh, now the gadgets on the human body in a factory worker have increased so much. Right from the camera here and what safety gadgets and all that. So he looks like an astronaut now. <laughs> Imagine that they are having brain and doing the activity. So how, that is the level which we are going towards that. Yeah, yeah. We are making them that way. Mike, what is your experience? What do you think about where are we heading? Yeah, I think uh, I think what Mr. Roger was saying was was quite good, uh, correct. Um, the Previously, if um, if the end product from a ground for a steel factory had uh, had an issue, um, then you had to trace it back through the various processes to find out what what had gone wrong, where the problem was. I think now with the uh, the systems becoming more in more integrated with each other and providing more information, it will become very obvious. Hopefully, before the product is finished, where the problems are coming, and you can predict uh, what is happening where there will be a problem and take care of it before it becomes a big issue. The other thing I can see happening going forward is that the machines um, will become more intelligent and will inform the main, um, inform um, the, the staff in the factories where the problems are coming, when they can, see, they can monitor themselves and predict if they need some maintenance, um, give some feedback to the maintenance staff and tell them what is happening, what needs changing. And in case of a problem, they can give more information about what is happening, um, which may lead to that you don't need such specialist engineers in the factory. You can have more general engineering and the machines will tell the engineers what is what is wrong, what needs to be fixed or what, not, what needs to be adjusted. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Thanks for your feedback. Actually, so, when you, yeah. Please, please. Yeah, I have a small point, my experience to add in this. Uh, Mr. Rajesh was mentioning about the AI, how it helps uh, people uh, do that. In uh, We gave a device to ready mix concrete machines. You must have seen the transit mixes going in the street, in the highways. Mm -hmm. uh, they have an inherent weakness of not more than two. I mean, two hours, beyond two hours, it becomes unusable, the concrete. The flow changes. So our machine predicts the flow. And accordingly, pumps in the chemicals only while the machine is in transit. So the entire ready mix concrete can be run up to 12 hours, it will be useful. And the amount of chemical, the density change, everything is available to the RD department online. Yeah. So they can work on the uh, process also, they can work on the mixing, raw metal ratio. Now, what they do generally to avoid the weakening of the strength, they prepare a high strength concrete so that in the dumping area it will be reaching a normal sea. So we are unnecessarily giving a extra raw material and we are using a sweetener mix to reach that uh, kilogram or whatever strength, mm -hmm. right? So these small devices, no, is going to change the entire uh, profile of the uh, country 
and uh, even you know uh, the one of the drivers told me that i want this vehicle only sir because that is fitted with this device for him there is no need for chipping the inner inner sometimes it is setting inside the drum and it becomes a tedious task for him to chip it out right it's costly also so they started adapting even illiterate started uh, uh, adapting these technologies because it is benefiting them so much right the right. resistance is the initial resistance but afterwards once they start enjoying the technology i think everyone would, uh, would like to adapt it so we feel that uh, 10 years down the line the country i mean the entire industry will be totally different right? everyone will be like uh, astronaut only <laughs> including ourselves we will have several gadgets on us i still agree <laughs> the, the work flow is being changed like the industrial worker what we had seen in the past is not going to be the same first of all you are absolutely yeah. right sir yeah, yeah. so yeah. Uh, the set required for the next 10 years 20 years is all the line uh, is there a completely different yeah it's like a house made without a washing machine so you won't come right <laughs> 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 really days are not there ghar mein to washing machine hai kya sab puch ke aata hai na <laughs> so actually when we were studying you know, metal, uh, yeah i'll tell you when we were studying metallurgy in the college we were thinking as long as iron carbon diagram doesn't change we don't have to learn anything new but <laughs> but it is not so now the skill set required for the future operations i think the factory is totally different and totally uh, demanding and you know quite difficult so uh, yes. Yes. i think uh, yeah but generally the as mike said you know in the in his talk that uh, he is having a uh, he is uh, quite happy about the increased response from the customers european industry is now taking up digitalization in a positive way i think indian industry has also learned to take the digit first of all take the digitalization seriously it is not yes. a hype it is not a buzzword it is not a uh the, it is not a fashion and fashion anymore it is a yes. it is a requirement it is a requirement need of the hour that is what yeah. now uh, people have started understanding and i feel yeah. uh, you know in coming years also a lot of aspects there are two aspects how to look at digitalization i think dr rajesh your company looks at it in a holistic manner so you are trying to provide something like i map or something uh, the holistic solution for the digitalization process whereas uh, emg or uh, the genu they are trying to catch the small small areas like uh, underwater you have uh, you have done that expertise or robotics is one area which you which you are capturing similarly emg is also capturing some areas under the umbrella of digitalization and making the whole that thing smarter or smart so there are the many many ways to approach digitalization isn't it how can one app i mean if i if i am a company i say i go for digitalization what do i do who tells me sir i i how feel that my point for digitalization how do i yeah. know what digitalization is required for me it is like oxygen jaise ho gaya sir it is required but where from you start that is the question yeah that is individual uh, you know uh, yes yes because uh, individual you will become obsolete sir otherwise no one of my ceos was telling yes. when his company was having 10 years order book i asked him in one seminar why do you modernize why you do why do you automate because your uh, requirement is not there aapka to 10 saal ka order hai right he told yes. i want to be future ready simple otherwise i will become obsolete overnight so it is digitalization is a, uh, i mean uh, it is a essential part it's no more an optional thing or a luxury but yeah. where from you start which department say chalu karna right whether it is from the actual uh, information it is iot devices it is possible to do it in a modular way it is yeah. possible to do it in a modular way yes yes rajesh yes. what is your experience what is your advice to the new companies yes sir it is like this when every company is having a vision and it's a mission statement and there are several departments associated to execute to reach to that vision and mission visionary thing right so in the same manner digitalization digitalization department maybe the same, the names may be different in each individual section maybe they say improvement or new things or yeah. something they will put it but idea is 
you need to start somewhere in the industry first of all so a separate department we needs to be floated first of all top management should have that thing the motive that in the next 5 years my company every aspect of my company is getting displaced everything i can monitor on my screen i can see that and i can take the control actions over there so that particular set to be there why should i do that and why should i do that every department every activity why should i digitalize that's what it is if you want to be it's not fashion no it is something uh, it is not fashion right now that, that's what i am telling to you over a period of time in the next 10 years what is this generative ai is going to change your life drastically you, we we need to we need to go along with the uh, other things which that are moving around us we cannot be isolated and we can move in the same fashion what we are doing 20 30 years back so the new techniques if you are adopting you are the first come so that what are the new techniques and what is to be done for that so even for the, from the from the from the worker industrial worker perspective the skill set what you are imbibing in the 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 engineers whom you are recruiting in suppose a steel plant as mike said there is generalist is enough now there is no specialization okay that that statement is to be little bit modified generalist is enough but who is having a thorough knowledge about what they are doing inside that particular plant suppose a steel plant is doing so without metallurgy mechanical electrical the core branches we cannot run the industry but unfortunate thing is the scenario is so many colleges are taking out those core branches out mm-hmm. and all are putting in computer science engineers into the picture so the computer science engineers they themselves need to try for the first of all they are core core computer science students they know the metallurgical aspects also they know the chemical aspects also they know the mechanical aspects also some minors they need to do major is computer science minor is all the sub branches now once this knowledge is knowledge base is created once this department is created with that certain knowledge base so equipment by equipment department by department then the whole industry needs to move towards the digitalization this is to be taken on the near phase of manner mm. so which wherever the manual interventions are there sensors need yeah, to be put yeah. in some sensors to iot to be connected iot to that is to be connected to the integrated uh, the cloud platforms so this this is the way one needs to have a long term vision say three years or the five year down the plan and then needs to be needs to bring in digitalization into the industry This, this yeah, is, there will be roadmap for them. Like I said, uh, Mike, I uh, you uh, you have been uh, operating in Europe. You have experience of operating in China also and India also. How would you compare these three markets? So, uh, I mean, you can answer this question. Yeah, yeah. Europe is very varied. You know, based on country to country. Some countries are more um, adept. and willing to uh, to in- embrace it it's not really a choice as far as i can see because as the new technology becomes available old technology becomes ab- obsolete yeah. um, so, so it will be almost an organic process that companies will become digitalized because of the equipment they're using uh china um yes very um very um cutting edge technologies um very uh, adapting um all over the place all kinds of uh, not just in the steel industry but in day to day life as well and from what i see in india as well um is very um there's a lot of newer equipment going in in europe there's a lot of older equipment that's still being used and still being uh upgraded uh whereas in china and india there's a lot of new equipment going in which is obviously going to have elements of digitalization in it and i think this is the way things will will progress we'll be upgrading equipment in europe and the new equipment will be in china and india if europe is in 2000 2023 what year china is in and what year india is in uh china is probably um it's hard to say it's hard to say you know i think uh, in some aspects so china uh, is on uh, in 2023 and what about india I would say not far behind from what I have seen. India is very close. Uh, the new equipment that I've been seeing putting in, um, the capability of the engineers in India is very, very close. China likes to think there's no, a big as gap. markets, as markets. How how prepared are the markets? From that respect, I'm asking. Um, not from the expertise. Uh, we know we have a lot of expertise. Yeah, yeah, sure. 
Um, the Ch in China, they seem to be very accepting of the digital technology. Um, as an example, it's very hard these days to spend cash in China. Everything is done by phone. Everything is done by phone. If you buy something in the shop, you pay by phone. It's very hard to use cash. Um, yeah. And this is not the case in Europe. Um, I'm not sure in India, maybe also not the case, but certainly they are embracing new technology at uh, a breakneck speed. It's uh, it's incredible how, how fast they are embracing it. Mm -hmm. Maybe in some cases too much, you know. Um, big data is available for all kinds of things and uh, the information is available, um, all sorts of information. Um, there is some reluctance to this in Europe. People like don't like to have their personal too much about them uh, available. It's too much information about them are available. Um, so there's a little bit of reluctance to this in China. It's very, it's very more, much more um, open, shall we say? But the information is more open to certain, certain uh, authorities, shall we say? Yeah, Raja, Dr. Rajesh, what are your views on this? How how are we placed? Europe, China, India. With respect to right. the markets about on digitalization, with, with respect to the acceptance of digitalization. Yeah, I can I can say in this way. Because the, if you say with the population, the population age age bracket we are in, India is a more the youngest nation compared to even China in that aspect. Mm -hmm. So the adoption of new technology and new things are much more faster to India. Okay, China, because of its sheer size and the uh, economy size and uh, say the whatever the production size, they are little bit ahead of the technology front. But uh, as far as new adoption is concerned, India is fast moving, fast catching up China compared to any other country. Raja, what is your experience? See, uh, as a marketing person, I have been into uh, marketing or visiting customers for almost 30 years. Right, as an entrepreneur or something. Mm -hmm. So normally, basic marketing call will uh, say that ten percent success to achieve. Okay. That's client. One to convert hoga. Conversion rate bolte hai. So now, after being a mentor in IIT, and now again, I'm picking up the basics to sell the digitalization or the robotics to the industries. I meet many, many CEOs and the uh, chairman level people. I feel that my marketing call is hundred out of hundred. Right, that itself is an indicator that everyone yeah, wants to change. Yeah. Everyone yeah. wants to grow. Yes. Yeah. I visit 10 clients, all 10 clients become my customers. Right. So that feel uh, that uh, the uh, it gives an indication that uh, everyone is interested in growing with an affordable cost. Right. Yeah. When other come, I mean, important technology is coming, they are literally scared. One is the cost, another thing is the service. So when you are telling we are just now available you from here and giving this uh, hot metal sample I can collect and give you or uh, wherever molten metal carrying I can do it with my remotely operated vehicle. See uh, every client has become I mean every visit has uh, given I mean given me a commercial uh, visiting order. So mm -hmm. that way I see uh, I mean my order books also are too good presently whatever balance sheet I have got this year I have that much of order book for the coming year. So we are really I mean uh, upbeat in that. And we have taken, uh, based on uh, some of the uh, machines, what we have done here, we have some export orders also to Europe. So I feel people have started looking at it. And uh, it is not, uh, it is in the, I can't say that it is in the crawling stage or it has come to the uh, better level. I see so. Mera soch, I say. Mera experience, I say. And that's very encouraging, Raja. What has been your experience, uh, Dr. Rajesh? Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. It is like uh, uh, there are more cycles now in the market compared to the any years in the past. People had seen the advantage in the COVID. COVID has taught us that how the digitalization can be effectively utilized. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, you are also very optimistic about the uh, markets. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Markets. Yeah, uh, Mike. What is your experience in India? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the, the your specific uh, experience in India and specific uh, expectations from India. Yeah. 
yeah, we're expecting, you know, um, expecting a lot of business from India going forward. I think uh, there's a lot of uh, potential um, for future business and uh, this will embrace the latest equipment. So I think uh, the Indian, Indian steel industry will be um, very uh, modern and very efficient going forward. And I think this will be very good, very good for the for the customer, the Indian customers and for the Indian producers. Okay, so I think let's close on this note. Uh, everybody is quite positive about the future of digitalization in India in general and uh, steel industry in particular. So uh, the fact that our our uh, digital shows are also growing in <laughs> yeah. it also shows the interest and the seriousness of people in the process of digitalization. So I thank all the three participants, uh, Mr. Raja, Dr. Rajesh, and Mr. Mike for your insightful inputs uh, in this subject. And I wish all the three a very best of luck for your future endeavors because you are, all are the uh, flag holders of the digitalization for the industry. So let your company grow so the digitalization process hastens in the, fastens in the industry. So uh, as Mike said, the whole thing, uh, uh, the companies and the whole operations will be digitalized in some uh, in a few years from now. So thank you very much. We had a very great discussion. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much.